Hi, my name is Phil, and I'm a Scala developer. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, where are you going? Stop. All right, cool. So I'm going to be talking about uh, Drop Wizard on top of Scala. Um, so a, a little bit about me. My name's Phil Monroe, um, senior software engineer at Workday. Uh, I've been doing Scala about a year and a half now. Um, been enjoying it. So um, I'm going to go through things probably pretty quick. It's a lightning talk. Um, so if you want to look at the slides, philmonroe.com slash slides slash Drop Wizard. Um, example application on GitHub. Demo on Heroku. Um, cool. So what is Drop Wizard? Um, <clears throat> it is basically everything you wanted when you were developing with Java, put together for you, and you know, made into uh, a library that's just convention over configuration. So you don't have to worry about, you know, am I building a web container? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? You just have a simple application and simple configuration, and the thing starts for you. Um, <clears throat> So, so just to start off, what is it like running a Drop Wizard application? Uh, it packages up all into one jar. You just say java-jar. First argument's server, starting server. Second argument's the config file. Um, generally just simple YAML or possibly JSON if you want. Um, if you're a super ninja, you can actually you know, redefine your main method, get rid of those two arguments, and your operations guys will love you. So all they have to do is just you know, curl a jar, Start it up, and you're good to go. Um, cool. So this is what it actually looks like. Um, can't really see it too well, but you know, it it gives you a nice little banner when things start up. You get a listing of all of your endpoints, um, and basically just you know, looks nice. So let's look at a, just a simple application. <clears throat> um, there's very little that you need to do. There's just two methods that you need to implement. Um, initialize, where this is just you have your you know, your setup code. Um, you can see here I've got, you know, what I'm calling a bundle. Um, these are basically just initializers. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about them later. Um, but you just initialize some things and then run. This is where you actually register, hey, Jersey, I'm, you know, I'm starting up with, you know, with this context. Well, I guess one thing I forgot to mention, so Drop Wizard uses, you know, Jetty under the hood, um, uses JAXRS to actually set up its endpoints. So. You just <clears throat> register with Jersey. Hey, I'm registering these things, so when you start up, you're good to go. Um, config files, they're simple. Um, you just, you know, they're just basically plain old Java objects. You can use case classes, and it automatically just serializes these YAML files into them for you. Um, and if you want to use Heroku um, and, and follow the 12 factor app kind of mentality, you can just get system properties and you're good to go. Um, one thing that's nice is it also uses validations for you. Um, so you can actually say, you know, I have to have, you know, I, I can't just get null from, from the environment or, or else, you know, everything will fail for you. Um, so that leaves your config files looking to be nice, simple, readable YAML files. Um, easy to work with. Um, again, makes your ops guys very happy to not have to deal with mile long uh, Java properties files. Um, so resources, these are the things that actually, um, you know, connect your, uh, <clears throat> these are the actual, like, endpoints that you define and, and work with. Um, so here's just a very simple hello world. Um, you can see it's just, it's just a class. Uh, it produces, you know, text plane. Um, and I've just got one method on it, and that's a get. And as you can see, I just return a string, hello world. Um, you know, very simple. Uh, it's a little bit different from, from Play or some of the other frameworks where you define your routes one place and they link up to a class another place. With this, you know, you have everything all kind of consolidated in one little class that's easily testable and you can clearly say, hey, what's going on? Um, and then, yeah, so once you have a resource, you just register it with the runtime and, and you're good to go. Um, cool, so here's a little bit more complicated example. It's actually still really stupid simple. But, you know, if we're actually building APIs, we're not just passing text around. So what's really nice is, you know, it, it already sets up, you know, Jackson for you, so it can serialize case classes back and forth um, from the server. So you can see that if you want to just, re just return time from your class, and it automatically serializes for you. Um, 
There you go, nice simple JSON. Um, so managed objects. Uh, these are basically just, you know, with most services, your service starts up, you need to call start on a bunch of things, wait for things to connect. All right, your server's running, finally. Um, you do your thing, and then when you shut down, you need to safely shut down. So, so managed objects are just, you know, just that. Simple little classes that have start and stop. Um, and you register them with the lifecycle of your environment in your application. Um, <clears throat> so you can just see, uh, you know, so here in, in my, you know, sample application, I'm, I'm reading from Twitter, just listening to a Twitter stream, and ultimately indexing it into Elasticsearch. Um, so you can see this is all that I need to do to actually initialize um, Hostbird for, for reading from Twitter. Um, you know, have my client builder, say connect, say stop, done. Um, cool. So now bundles. These are just simple little initializers. Um, and it's, what's really nice is if you think about th these basic applications, if you just stuck with this simple application um, and just added all of your resources in one place and initialized everything together, this thing would just become massive. So what's really nice is you can just define these, you know, little sub bundles that uh, just kind of encapsulate all of the, you know, the functionality that needs to, to happen for you. So you can have, you know, like you see here, I have my tweet stream bundle where you know, I initialize my, you know, my tweet stream, my managed object. I initialize a processor that actually processes the tweets. I register both of these guys with the, the life cycle of the server. So as things start up, they start. As it shuts down, they shut down. And I'll talk about health checks later, but I've also even just registered a simple little health check. Um, so nice and simple. And how this kind of works is you can just kind of layer up these, these bundles um, to just basically mix in functionality. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and just so how things work, you know, it, you can flip back and forth between a bundle and an application, and they actually really have kind of just the same kind of signature. You have initialized to do some setup. You have run that you need to do right before you start the server. Um, so they're, they're just really just kind of like simple abstractions. Um, cool, and so to me, one of the most interesting things about Drop Wizard is the admin interface that you get for absolutely free. Um, it's <clears throat> basically, it just mixes together a lot of the, the core Java frameworks like metrics, and setting up health checks and all these kinds of things to give you a very ugly but functional uh, interface. Um, so as you can guess, ping, when you click it, it says Pong. Um, metrics gives you, you know, detailed metrics about anything and everything that you'd ever want. Um, when you click threads, you get a thread dump of what's going on on your server. And health check, you'll get health checks. Um, and if you wanted to, um, by default, the admin interface you know, fires up on a second port, um, one above the, 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 the default port. That way, it's, it's firewalled off. Your users don't have to worry about hitting it. And it's just it's nice and safe. Here, I'm running it on Heroku, so I only have one port. So there is an easy way to kind of slap them together. Cool, so let's, let's talk about health checks. Um, <clears throat> in any actual production environment, you want to make sure that you can actually see what's going on with your service. So it's, it's really nice to just have a simple mechanism for, for registering and, and dealing with health checks. Um, so this is an example of what happens when you hit uh, you know, the admin slash health checks API. You get this nice simple JSON response. It tells you whether, you know, are there any deadlocks. I've registered two health checks, one to check Elasticsearch, one to check Twitter. Um, you know, when something blows up, you get nice detailed, you know, output from, hey, what happened? Uh, so, and this, and this is all you have to do <clears throat> to basically just register a health check. It's, you just need to define, define your health check, have a simple method say check, and return whether it's healthy or not. You can actually return, you know, some, some messages if, if you want to, um, but for the most part, whether it's true or false is good enough. Um, and again, to actually just register it with it, uh, with the actual runtime, just environment.healthchecks.register, Elasticsearch, and whatnot. Nice and simple. Um, so metrics. Um, again, in production, you really want to know what's going on with your system, so you need to track everything. <laughs> um, there's no need to not 
basically not track anything. Um, so here you can see, by default, you get a lot of metrics just tracked for you. Um, so you get this nice, simple REST API <clears throat> that you can write Nagio health checks against or even just see what's going on when you're debugging your application. Um, so you get all of these you know, stats about the JVM. You get a bunch of meters. You can actually see how fast you're logging to your log files. Um, but one thing that's really cool is you get really detailed, you can get really detailed uh, metrics about your actual endpoints. And all you actually have to do is slap on a couple extra um, <clears throat> annotations, and you're good to go. And you can start seeing, um, all right, my hello world resource, you know, how many times has it been hit? How many times have I gotten exceptions? What is the mean rate um, for the past minute? And all, and all those kinds of things. Um, and the best part about it is if you want to, you know, log it straight to Graphite and build pretty dashboards and see what's going on, you just slap this into your config file, include one extra dependency to say, how do I talk to, to Graphite, and you're done. Um, so there's not much else you really need to do. Uh, cool. So the admin interface also has this uh, concept of tasks. Um, these are basically just one-off commands that you need to do from time to time. Maybe you want to, I don't know, uh, programmatically trigger a shutdown of your service, or in my use case, I, you know, I need to make sure that I have an Elasticsearch uh, index loaded and created and have proper mappings. Um, so you can just create simple little, simple little classes. Um, again, you register it with the admin. Um, and here, I'm just all I'm doing is just making sure that I have an index Twitter. And you can just, with curl, programmatically make sure that you know, any little thing that you need to do with your application is done. Um, so that's all really just kind of like the basic workings. And from that, you can build very simple applications. Um, is that a question? Um, <clears throat> so no, not built. To, so the question was, is there any uh, kind of like periodic tasks that you can get to do? Um, so no, not, uh, not built in. Um, but what you would do in something like that where you need like you know, scheduled kinds of things, um, you would create like a managed object using Quartz or some other like background scheduler um, to have these tasks, and then you could you know, create one of these tasks to just basically schedule your first one, and you can have it so it sits there repletes, you can have another task to stop it and do those kinds of things. So that's how I, I would probably go about doing something like that. Um, so yeah, so that's just, oh, all right, five minutes, cool. Uh, so, so what else does Drop Wizard give you? Um, all of this was just kind of the basic stuff that you can, you can get going. Um, it's, you know, it's not very sexy and functional, but it's really simple. Um, <clears throat> and it's, you know, it's using all of the, the tried and true you know, Java infrastructure that people have been using for years. Um, and it's really Googleable whenever you have issues that you need to debug. Um, but you also get Jersey and Apache HTTP clients for free that are set up with thread pools and, um, and automatically metric so that they show up in, you know, in your metrics API. It has easy ways to deal with JDBI and Hibernate um, if that's your thing. Um, migrations, it's got its own migration framework uh, for, for migrating databases. Um, I'm kind of bummed, but it's, it's based in XML. Uh, XML's not my favorite. Uh, <clears throat> but it, it does allow you to do quick little migrations from from you know, just changing your database and, and safely and reliably. Authentication, um, you can also quickly drop in either OAuth or basic auth, and it works. Um, you can actually do views with mustache. Um, it's probably not the most in, you know, inviting environment for, for front end developers, but you can actually do, do some stuff with that if you wanna have a nice little uh, interface. And then custom commands, um, which are a lot like tasks. Um, which basically allow you to, you know, from the command line, run things. Um, cool, some annoyances that I've used uh, or ran into with it. Um, it's pretty Java-y and, and a little annotation heavy. Um, it's a bit annoying to, to manage um, like server-specific configs across, you know, many different environments. Um, and but I mean, you know, that's really simple to deal with if you have you know, an automated environment with Puppet and those kinds of things. And um, the one thing that I actually ran into recently, it used to auto-reconnect whenever database connections were dropped. 
in the latest version it doesn't. That's just something to keep in mind if, you know, just so you know. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So you just get a bunch of crap for free. <laughs> um, cool. So to go a little bit beyond Drop Wizard, these are two quick little uh, uh, libraries that we use to kind of make our life easier um, when building our, our you know, little micro frameworks. Um, Swagger, um, it's just basically super simple API documentation. Um, you drop in, again, a couple, you know, a few more uh, <clears throat> annotations. You know, I say this is an API, you know, and whatnot. And then you get these really nice kind of web interface documentation that you can actually test out your APIs, see what's going on, see what, uh, you know, just basically see what's happening in production or, or wherever. Um, Juke, also a really nice, you know, SQL framework. Um, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff of how to execute uh, SQL from, from strings. Um, but Juke does, you know, type safe SQL execution programmatically. Um, basically, it does involve a little bit of setup to get to a nice kind of clean interface. But once you've, you know, once you've got your data source and you have a simple little executor class, you can do very nice things like Juke, execute, and, and build your, your, your uh, SQL mappings. Cool. Questions? Anybody? Bueller? Yeah. Do you have to do anything special for SCA support? Is it just really from a Java perspective first? Uh, so it is a little bit from a Java perspective first. The only thing that you would really want to, you know, make sure that you're doing with uh, a Scala version of this is to, in your main application, just include the Scala bundle. And that configures everything and makes sure that Jackson knows about case classes and, and any of the an annoyances of trying to deal with Java to Scala. But so as long as you've got that, that Scala bundle as like the first thing, it's actually pretty, pretty simple to work with. Yes? How do um, so <clears throat> you, you would probably ultimately end up having to, to handle that yourself, um, which is a little bit of a bummer, but you could just you know, define your own custom metrics um, to actually present what's going on. So. No, it, it, it would not intercept the features for you. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Do we get any uh, support from Colin K on the Scala usage? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, honestly, I ha haven't heard much from Coda Hale about, about the Scala usage. Um, it's, it's been pretty, pretty easy to work with. Um, I've asked a couple questions on, on the, the message boards, and I've gotten responses pretty quickly. Um, I can't remember whether or not it was from Coda Hale or not. But, but yeah, it's it still seems like people are using it, and it's it's rather it's just simple to work with. So, cool. Anything else? All right. Thank you so much. Ah.